Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, I wanted to invite um, a former Jam Pro business consultant onto our uh, webinar to uh, give his intake or his input on his experiences with Jam Pro and things that he saw as a business consultant that that should be able to help new and upcoming Jam Pro business consult uh, franch franchisees with their business. Um, I want to welcome Alger Warren to our platform. Alja, how are you do today, sir? I'm good, Pharrell. Good to see you, man. Good <laughs> seeing you. Um, I just wanted to get started with, um, tell a little bit about your story and how you got started with Jam Pro and, um, you know, things that you, that, that you experienced with Jam Pro and those things that could help uh, some of the franchisees with their business. Okay. Um, well, I, I started working with Jam Pro uh, just, you know, in the midst of needing another job. I was searching for for a job, and um, the master franchise owner. I saw the I saw an application on um, Indeed, so I followed up with the master franchise owner. And long story short, he hired me. So I was very happy to start the job and um and work with business owners, you know, because uh, I ultimately had a dream to start my own business. But I I was very excited to do that. So um, I, he he hired me as a I forget the title. He called it a franchisee business, a franchisee consultant or something like that. I think that's what he calls it. And um, same thing as the operations manager. What I would do um, as any anyone that you, you know, if you're a new franchise owner, when you start with Jam Pro, after you sit with the master franchise owner and you and you speak about uh, what plan you're going to invest in, then you go to training. So I would I would take over at training. And uh, train the new franchise owners on Jam Pro's methods of cleaning, how they clean, um, what Jam Pro looks for um, on the operation side. We would come in and pretty much <laughs> they say we don't pick apart people's cleaning, but <laughs> I guess, you know, as well as I do, like we we go in there and we pick apart your cleaning. Yeah. You know, we we point out the things that we believe a customer might see before they see it. We try to let you know, because sometimes, you know, as a franchise owner, you may have uh, people cleaning the building for you and they don't clean like you cleaned. You know, maybe you started cleaning the account. And as you were cleaning the account, you know, you hired some people and they're not doing what you may have done. So we're like the second pair of eyes and ears, you know, with the franchisee consultant. Um, so tell me, um, what are the biggest things that you when you're inspecting these accounts uh, that you find that most uh jam uh jam pro franchisees miss um during their cleans what what what, what would you say would be the number one the number um, one um uh, i'd say number one is high dusting <laughs> and number two would probably be things like window ledges uh you know little small horizontal surfaces that collect dust you know that probably be, you know what it's a tie between that and urinals <laughs> <laughs> definitely um, urinals because people don't uh, realize that beneath the urinal yeah beneath yeah. the urinal people don't see that or 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 notice that you have to wipe up under the urinal and mm -hmm. i've been dinged a lot on those inspections as well um yeah. because i think uh and you'll wonder where the smell is coming from it looks clean yeah, yeah. It smell like urine it's still there. smelling yeah, it smells like urine is because the bottom of the urinal needs to be wiped down. Um, so let me ask you, um, from your from your experience as a business consultant, what were the main things people would say negative about Jam Pro and um, getting started with Jam Pro as far as their business? Because I hear a lot of complaints saying that, you know, we're not making any money with Jam Pro, um, things of that nature. And I tell a lot of people, you know, you know, you need to do your numbers before you accept the contract. Yes. Um, and 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 can you elaborate uh, elaborate a little bit more on why they should do their numbers and um, things of that nature? Yes, um, that's a good good topic because that is something I would deal with a lot. You know, I'd be getting ready to go out do an inspection. I'll just give you a quick case scenario before I dig into the answer. So I'd, uh, I'd, you know, before I go out to do an inspection or something, a franchise owner would come in into the office and they would say, we need to talk about my accounts. You know, I'm not making any money. 
And um, I, you're definitely right about doing the numbers because when an offer is presented to you, you really need to take time and say, okay, um, and here's a little, I guess a little gem I can drop for some of the new franchise owners. Um, typically, I was told by our master franchise owner at the time that one person can clean about 2,000 square feet in an hour. Um, so you could take that, you could take your square feet as far as numbers and divide that and see about how long it would take you and see if you're going to make any money. But um, I think a lot of people were upset they weren't making money because they were taking a lot of accounts. They would come in, let's say, with um, a $400 investment, you know, for a plan. And then they take on three or four accounts that they can't pay for cash yet. And they do what's called sweat equity in the Jam Pro contracts, which is basically you got to work off work off the account. You know, the master franchise owner has gone out. They've acquired the account for you. You know, you've got your administrative side and all that. But now you have to pay for it. And for many of them, I don't think it really I don't think it really sank into their minds until the until the uh, settlements come in that, oh, that's what the sweat equity is. You know, it had they just paid the money, you know, um, or maybe just worked their regular account for a little bit and then pay for their next one so that they or, you know, pay for half of it. Any amount you can pay for. You know, instead of getting fully trapped into the sweat equity deal would make your business grow faster um, because, you know, the whole object is you don't want to have any debt, you know, um, owed to the office other than the uh, 23 percent that they would collect. So, you know, when you have to, when they take that 23 percent plus your multiplier, um, if you all aren't familiar, should I explain the multiplier? Sure. OK. When you get an account and you can't pay for it, the, the master franchisee or the office calls you and they say, hey, we have an account. It pays four hundred dollars a month. Um, it's going to cost you sixteen hundred dollars to get the account. You say, OK, well, the sixteen hundred is is the, the monthly fee of four hundred. I mean, the monthly. Um, um, revenue. Revenue. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't get it out of my head. Uh, so the revenue is four hundred. And then they multiply it times four or times three, depending on um, where you are in your, your franchise journey. And so when they do that multiplier, a lot of them don't know because they say, hey, I want a big building, you know, and, and you, if someone calls you and they say, hey, I got an account, pays 3000 a month. Well, guess how much it's going to cost you? 12 grand before you can see your 3000 a month. So even though we go over this in training, I used to just... Constantly repeated to people, and, but they it never really sunk in until they started upside getting upside down. <laughs> and they're like, wait, where's all this money coming from? And then it sinks in. I have six whole months of working this for no money. So, you know, I, anybody starting off, I would always tell them, if you're starting with, with little to nothing, don't expect to make money for about another year and a half. You know, I, I would tell them that. Um, and it's not the truth. Every case, you know, some cases it would they would move quicker. Um, but, you know, you, you like you say, Perel, you have to do the numbers, do your math. If you're not sure, the franchisee consultant, the, the operations manager, the business consultant, whatever their title is, they can help you sit down and, and look at the numbers if you're not too sure. Because I remember one of our franchise owners, uh, sweet lady, a little rough around the edges, real hood. But um, she would come in and she would ask me questions until she had no questions left <laughs> uh, to the point to where sometimes, you know, it was it was bothersome to me. But I wanted her to, you know, I would really wanted her to, to get it, you know. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope I answered the question. Yeah. That, 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 that. And I tell a lot of people, you know, anything under a thousand dollars that you can pay off in full, pay it off. Because yeah. in my theory, before you begin to even ask for big accounts, you need mm -hmm. to be cash flowing with the small accounts. Yes. That way, when you go, go into a big account and need that financing from a big account, mm -hmm. you're already making income from your mm -hmm. smaller accounts that can hold the weight of you paying that 23% uh, finance uh, franchise fee, then that multiplier 
on that and then having to pay 10 percent finance charge on that you know mm -hmm. so the money that you're making off of that is going to be little to none until you can get that contract paid off that's correct um well, this is my strategy. What I did was me and my wife, we came in, we paid everything that was small off in full. Mm -hmm. And then we took larger accounts, but we only took them one or two at a time. That gave mm -hmm. us a way. And then we did the 12 month financing. So it, it allowed us to get some meat off the bone. It allowed us to make some right. passive income to where it didn't seem like we was working for nothing until we got that a contract paid in full. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you want to always not owe Jam Pro anything as far as financing. That's because right. Because a lot of people will get snowballed. They'll they'll have a lot of accounts. Because I, I like Jose, he had 20, 30 accounts. We had a lot. But you're 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 snowballed because a lot of that stuff is financed. And you're, you know, you're upside down. You can't, you know, you can't really hire the people that you need to staff it with because you're not making any money. And that can discourage a lot of franchise owners because they're really not making a lot of money because they're paying a lot into finance fees. Mm -hmm. you know? So and those are the things that I've always talked to people about. Yeah. Um, another thing. Um, so what would be your best advice as far as getting someone that are interested in starting Jam Pro, what would be your best advice for them? Um, mm. I know I give a lot of advice, but I want to hear it from a business consultant from your end. When you're when you're talking with these new franchisees, what would be your be best advice for them when they're just get, now getting started in the business? Just getting started. Um, come in one. I would say definitely come in with realistic expectations. It's good to have high hopes, but um. Just understand that it's going to take time. So that's the first thing. Um, the second I would say is uh, develop good relationships with your customers. Develop very good relationships with your customers because, uh, and that's just on this point because I, I have a couple more, but I remember this one franchise owner, his relationship with his customers was so good that if there was an issue, they did not call the office, they called him. See, a lot of the franchise owners um, don't do much calling to their, uh, a lot of them, not all, but a, a bulk of ours um, would not really stay in touch with their customers like they should. And then they would be upset with me <laughs> when I would call them and say, hey, you've got uh, some issues at this account here and there. The customer said this, 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 that, and the third. Well, why didn't they call me? Okay, well, and the first thing I would say is, when's the last time you spoke with them? Oh, I talked with them last month. Well, there you have it right there. You know, you haven't talked with them in a few weeks. They have an issue, and you haven't been able to solve it. So um, keep a good relationship with your customers. Definitely keep realistic expectations. Um, and what you said as far as paying things off, you know, I know that you can start it for little to nothing, so on the realistic, realistic expectation side, if you're going to start with little to nothing, understand you're going to be working, you know, just keep that mindset. And then when, when the time comes, you, you'll you be fine. You know, you're going to have to budget. But then if you, if you are able to, to start with some money, I would say come into the business with five to ten thousand dollars, you know, as a good base to start with. So you would have you would be getting something back. You know, that those are those are my main things that I would advise someone. Um, and just don't get emotional if your customer, you know, tells you something that they have a problem with because that's what you're there for. You gotta have thick skin. We're in the cleaning yeah, business. So you gotta have thick skin. So they're not gonna thank you. You're gonna feel like you did the best job of your life. You're you gonna know, be blamed for everything. Yeah. Things that things that you don't even have any control over, they're gonna blame it on you, you know. Yeah. A my cup was missing. The detector. They're calling you. The cleaning, yeah. the cleaning crew didn't turn off the alarm last night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going to mm. blame it for you. So, you know, I tell a lot of people just have thick skin in this business. This is a, this is a, uh, can be a very rewarding business. But on the other end, we're just hired help. And that's how our clients see us, you know, see us as silent hired help, you know. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, just just have thick skin and and like you said, just just develop some good relationships with your accounts, and um, they'll call you if you have any issues, right. versus um, them reaching out to the Chan Pro office. Well, Alger, man, I'm glad you stopped by. Oh, you got anything else you want to add? Yeah, I want to add one more tidbit for the new for the new franchisee owners. Learn your specials of your account. Like, and by special, we mean like, if do they do they shampoo their carpet? Do they do strip and wax? Because if you can actually keep those in house for yourself to do, that's a nice little chunk of change every now and then. You know, some specials. I've seen carpet shampoos for thousands of dollars, and it took the person three or four hours to shampoo the carpet and they and they got a nice little uh fifteen hundred dollar check you know so and yeah. i tell a lot of people those niche those niche markets you mm -hmm. know stripping wax um my niche is uh day porters day porter positions you know they're hard to fill but the multiplier is one on those accounts you know so that's the, the, those are kind of things that you pick up when you become a seasoned franchise owner. You know, you pick up some some things that, hey, there's not a lot of people that's doing stripping wax. Can I get in this? Can I learn stripping wax so I can get all the money when wax jobs come? They'll have, you know, they'll call me for that, you know. So right. those are the things that you want to learn the shampoo and carpet as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So those were good, some good nuggets. Uh, Alger, um, thanks for stopping by, man. I, I appreciate everything. And um, don't be a stranger, man. Um, you know, uh, we lean on good advice and uh, hopefully we can continue to have these uh, Zoom calls for um, in the future. Um, yeah, so sure. thank you for coming in. Hey, guys, until the next time, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and we'll see you. Uh, on the next video. Thanks for stopping. Okay.